just doing a lot more sanding and I got the trunk lid pretty much all done. So now all I got is a passenger door left to do so you can see the body work on the trunk lid came up pretty darn nice. I'm going to sand the top with uh, 150 right now and then maybe tomorrow if it's nice shoot some paint on the underside. Really, really does look good. I don't know if it, it's hard to see with the camera, but it looks and feels amazing. I kind of go over it with 150 with the air file, so if there's any little dimples or any, you know, uh, irregular ladies, door dings or anything, they show up. It's windy out, so hopefully the wind doesn't uh, mess up the video too much. basically paint ready so tomorrow I'm going to give all this ever all the primer I'm going to give a light sand on this side and then I'll mask just around the edges of the lid and you know all the way around so I don't get over spray on the other side and I'm going to paint the inner side tomorrow hopefully this is tomorrow and I got the trunk lid all masked and scuffed out and ready to shoot a coat of paint on. So I'm going to start mixing it up and get it done. The joy of mixing paint. Well, surprisingly all the metallic wasn't stuck in the bottom. I'll give it a good stirring. You can see it's starting to turn silver as I stir it. measured out a jar I'm going to use so I put in eight parts of paint to three parts of reducer to one part of hardener. It's just easier to use jars like that. It's you know when I'm doing jams and things like that I just kind of use jars and do it this way. Yeah, I looked at the jar and I thought, oh, my math has got to be wrong because that was just way too much reducer. And it was, I put in an inch and a half of paint in and I was thinking I was putting two inches of paint in. So I was measuring for that, but now it's all corrected. So I'm going to start mixing up paint. See how much of this I can spill. Do not use your same stick that you use in the gallon of paint to mix your paint and then put it, put it back in your gallon and you have hardware on this, you'll ruin your gallon of paint. Not to find the can lid, but I have another stick that says hardener on it, and that's one I can use in here. So let me go out and tack it and filter this into the paint cup, and I'll start shooting some paint on.
Let that dry a few minutes. Let that dry maybe a half an hour. That's what you've seen me spray so far. I'm going to put one more coat on it and call it good. Those That was like a ultra thin tack and then you know and I sprayed it this way across to the center and then that way across to the center and then I sprayed it from this way and that way. That way you get all these edges you know and I try and spray it back this way too to you know, just to kind of make sure I get all the edges on it. Looks like I got a little run there, but that's way less than what the factory had. And uh, I'm not as concerned. I just want this protected. So that's that's why I don't care. And I'm going to undercoat all up in there after it's all done. Both sides painted. Didn't get quite enough paint up in there, so I'm going to try and shoot some down in there. You know, I don't, if I get a little run around here, so be it. But I want that uh, painted. And how I see when it's ready for, okay, these are where the hinges screw on, so I can touch that. And that right now is ready for a second coat. See, it's not sticking or leaving my fingerprint. And it feels like masking tape. So that means we're ready to shoot another coat. I think we'll call that good. Looks pretty darn good. That looks good. It's not when you're spraying you get the runs. It's like five minutes later and uh, you know the paint looks marvelous when you first spray it on. Looks nice and glossy and wet. And then you come back and find big sags. So when I spray it usually it's not glossy what well, looking it has a slight little you can see the little bit of orange peel and as it flows it smooths out but you can see there I got a really attractive run there no big deal and I got paint down in there which 
was kind of a goal. But for the most part, that looks a bazillion times better than it did, doesn't it? And when the trunk's open, it'll look nice seeing that all nice and shiny and clean. So I'm going to let that dry an hour or so, and then I'm going to set it back in the garage. I want it to dry to the touch so I can try and carry it back in, set it back inside. And then we'll get the other side. This side's actually ready to sand and prime, so maybe I'll pull a tape off here shortly too. For now I'm just going to leave it on, but that side is ready to sand out in red oxide and get paint on the trunk lid too. Ah, it came out fantastic. Super happy with it. See how when I, let me show you here. See how when I touch that, see how I leave a fingerprint? It's still a little little on the tacky side if, if it were going to have another coat. Um, maybe another five minutes and then it would be ready for another coat if I was going to give it another one, but I don't think you could ask for a better. I hope the rest of the car turns out as good. I don't know why I get the jams turn out much nicer for some reason than the body paint. Maybe because I am a little more liberal and not caring if I get a little minor run or two. I think I'm going to throw this in the bead blast cabinet so I can paint this when I paint the you know the skin of the quarter panels. I don't want that to be painted separate from this. I want to paint this same time as these. So here's a really common issue I find with gas doors on cars is they're really you know light duty and this one had a little crease around it in here so I've been working on bumping it but you can see it's still in there so I'm gonna work that out try what I've been doing is putting my dolly here and tapping this out I think uh, tap that in a fair amount feels like it might still be a little high I might tap that down a little bit more but gas doors are common so after I bead blasted it I took some 320 on my rubber block and just kind of did this and that way you can see your imperfections in the model clearly and then I can work on it and then sand as I work on it until I don't see it anymore it's getting better and better there's a little bit right there and a little bit right there that's low and I'll just slowly plug away at it and just time consuming straightening this this is like doing a piece of trim because I don't want any filler in this because this is such a thin piece. I got this all cleaned up so after I bead blasted I was 320 sanding it and that's when I noticed that that high spot I believe it was right right in here I don't know it was high right in here and kind of low down in here it was I don't know if somebody bumped it or over the years or if, when somebody opened it if they peeled it back too far or something was in there and they closed it whatever anyway it was it's not, it's not uncommon to find these gas doors uh damaged because they're just sheet metal over the steel this is this is the body sheet metal folded over and spot welded to the steel so these bend quite easily but uh i noticed that it had a little crack in the sheet metal right here and this is right exactly where that crease came around so I welded that crack up and uh, got it all sanded out and nice and straight ready for primer I think I'm gonna bolt this on the car and just make sure it fits and works properly and I'll make sure this stuff isn't you know because if this is bent on this you know and it doesn't I don't want it to be all painted and put it on the car and then not have it fit I have to strip it and start over so that's why I'm gonna bolt it to the car just to see how it fits and then I'll if it fits good I'll prime it up and it'll be ready for paint that looks really good no uh I mean there's no bumpers on here so but it you know with the bumpers it'll fit perfect and I think that'll be fine so I'm going to take it off and prime it so when I paint the rear quarters I can paint this at the same time.
came out pretty darn good. So I'll let that dry and they'll be ready to... might put a coat of the gray on it and give it another quick sand. Just gray this with the sandable gray. And uh, give it a sanding before I spray it. But it looks pretty darn good. And I use this... I've had a lot of questions why I use this. And the reason why is right there. It etches, it bites into the metal. It actually bonds to the metal better than regular primers and especially if there's surface rust it'll bite into it and it's less chance of it coming back. Well, one last look at the trunk lid before I uh, wrap up this video. I got a lot of yard work, yard work to do today and it's like standing outside it's like quadraphonic lawnmowers. I don't know if the lawnmowers sound comes in the video or not but anyway I'm gonna call it a day on the car if you like my video definitely hit the like button share my video anything you do to help get more views definitely helps in the income part of it and will help put a new top on this car so again if you like the video hit the like button if you want to see this beautiful old galaxy restored back to its original condition subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching